this evening we want to talk about keeping your faith in God's faithfulness. Keeping your faith in God's faithfulness. Okay, let's turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. We will read in verse 11, right down to verse 20. Here Paul says, We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, Confirm it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us, enter, even Jesus make an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, because we are living in the last day, Jesus warned that difficult times will come. Even the elect, that means those who are strong in the Lord, they will fall by the right and by the left. What causes that? What causes a person to suddenly give up on their faith? Well, in the last day, the cares and affair of this life, that means the weariness, the burden of caring so much in life, has taken the toll upon a person's faith that the person become dull in the Lord, in their faith, not excited anymore, dragging and struggling to try to hold on to the belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible already warned us Okay, because the children of Israel in the Old Testament is a good example. They started off leaving Egypt very strong. But they led, along the way, they led a lot of things in life. No enough food, no enough meat, no enough flour, not enough comfort, many things to make them unhappy. See, the moment your soul is unhappy in your faith in God, it is going to cause you to be disappointed, discouraged. Eventually, you give up on your faith in God. Okay? Here, the Bible tells us, God promised you He will keep it. But you got to continue to believe. That's why... Paul mentioned here uh, that we show diligence, diligence to the full assurance of our hope unto the end. So the word diligence is a Greek word. Okay, the Greek word for diligence, to show the same diligence. 
it is called a uh, spuda s p o u d e with a hyphen spuda the word translated same is also means his her or their this is a reflective pronoun of self same diligent yourself okay diligent is a uh, meaning earnest in accomplishing carefulness in following through so diligence means what earnest in accomplishing that means not half hearted you completely accomplish it see a lot of people want to do something start a business start a go to work or but do something halfway they give up ha huh? that means they lack diligence all through begin good halfway tara you know of such people okay they started off good oh i want to become this this halfway give up i want to be a pilot halfway give up i want to be a mechanic halfway give up I want to start a business halfway give up. And so the word diligence is the Greek word carefully in following through. Carefully you got to follow through to the end. That's why the Bible say the hope until the end. So the person refer to that means they don't start off like a fire bomb and then fizzle out. You know, like like you you want the Chinese New Year coming, you want to light a firecracker. You light the firecracker, do no bomb. You expect it to, ah, uh, blow up, but if it's up, fizzle out. So don't let your faith fizzle out. Okay, because the Bible say what you need to have full assurance of hope. Unto the end, full assurance. You are sure. Okay, the diligence will cause you to be sure of assurance of hope to the end. In verse twelve, tells us what cannot be slothful. Ah, huh? he says here in verse twelve that you be not slothful. What is slothful? Ah. Huh? slothful the greek word means ah uh, genomai genomai in greek means become sluggish half hearted dull you know dull d u l l that means the person very boring uh, dull become very dull okay but we have the promises of god the word of god say to rely on the bible say in the end the word of god is going to stand because god is faithful what he promised will come to pass okay and so god called you and i into his kingdom as sons and daughters that means god called you to become sons and daughters you are victors v i c t o r s victor that means success victory god did not call you to become what victims a lot of christian they think oh god called me oh poor me i'm a christian now i'm a victim so they live their life in their faith uh, this cannot do that cannot do everything cannot do uh. so they start complaining god say i cannot do this god say i cannot eat that god say i cannot go there god say i cannot you know everything you are not a victim of god god did not call you to become a victim but god called you to become a victor to have victory in your life remember that if you find yourself becoming victim is because you are not diligent enough your faith you become sluggish slothful ah uh, we will come to that later because that's what happened 
Sometimes you ask yourself, why, why is this happening to me? You Then you need to realize you are the cause of your faith. Your faith must be in God, not God's. God has already got faith in you. If God don't have faith in you, you won't become a Christian. But because God got faith in you, you are a Christian, but you need to leave your faith as a victor, not victim. Uh, last time I thought about victor uh, and victim. And so the Bible tells Christian, because you are the recipient of the new covenant, grace and faith, remember, you are now in a period of living your life in grace and in faith. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, say what? <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 say, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So you've got to ask yourself now, Paul said, I am a prisoner. But Paul did not say, I'm a victim of the Lord. Okay, he did not say that. He said, I'm a prisoner. Prisoner means his faith is in God. Okay, that means he, he obeyed God. And he said, you've got to walk worthy of your vocation, your calling. So if you are called to be a Christian, you've got to ask yourself this question. Am I walking worthy of the law? Ah. Oh, you, you like the church of Israel, you complain, you complain, you complain. Because complaining is going to cause you to become a victim. Only victims will complain. Victor people will not complain. Okay? So you must walk. You, you must live in a manner worthy of your faith. Always remember. And then in Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. It says this, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Huh? Being fruitful. So if you are walking worthy of the Lord in all pleasing, you got to be fruitful. Fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So there is a connection. There is a relationship. Okay? You are called, but you must live. Because you are now a victor. You have a connection. A relationship with God. And the Bible here tells us that not only you walk worthy in the Lord, but in all pleasing, you must live to please God, not please yourself, not please somebody else. Don't do that in life. A lot of people live to please people. At one time, I also do that. But later, I grow out of that. I learn to please the Lord. Okay? You must learn to please God. Paul said what? The apostles say, I'd rather obey God than obey men. Does this mean you disobey the authority? No, 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 no. It does not mean that. It means in your life, God, you must please first, not people. If you please people, you are going to be dis disappointed because people will let you down. But God will not let you down. You must remember that. And then God wants you to be fruitful. Everything that you do, good works, it's got it's bad fruits. What is the use? You go to work and you then you don't get paid. Now you're on a worker. Huh? If you work for a company, last time I worked for one company, never pay me. Every month the salary uh, keep utang utang. I owe you. Utang hundred six months. Some or some crazy people will work for years, never get paid. Crazy, you know. These are crazy people. So you, do you want to be a crazy people? No, you don't want. You want to be a victim? No, you don't want. How can you work for a company and then they don't pay you? One month, don't pay, never mind. 
two months don't pay, three months something is wrong. And if you allow that, sorry lah, you are a victim. Yeah, they are taking advantage of you. I don't care even if that's your uh, family business or your relatives. You work so you get paid. Same thing, the Bible say, uh, you must bear fruit. If you got good, good works, it will bear fruit. Unless you don't have good works. All right? And he say, and increasing in the knowledge of God. That means every time you bear fruit, your faith in God increases. Your faith increases. It grows. The experience counts. Faith is not alone. Faith has got works. So today you look back after so many years serving God, you, you are happy. There, there's results. You are blessed. You bear fruit. You have matured. You cannot be still as a child struggling. That's why the Bible says what? Don't be weary in your faith. But there are people all through their belief in Jesus struggle. And if you struggle from day one after 10, 20, 30 years, friend, let's face it, you will be weary. Eventually what? No fruit, you will give up. I give up with my uh, papaya tree. Oh, uh, sorry, avocado tree. Never give me fruit, I give up. After how many years? After five years, six years, seven years, eight years, what I did, I killed the tree. <laughs> yeah, I killed the tree. Today, the tree is still there. All shriveled up, dried up. Let it die. Lah. Why? No fruits after eight years. Huh? So if we can do something like that to a tree, how much more God wants us to be? Fruitful. Because if you are not fruitful, you will kill yourself. You will become discouraged. You will give up on God. That's why the children of Israel, all the time, you know, don't have this, don't have that. They keep complaining. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. This is what he says. <clears throat> That you walk worthy of God who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. Again, it says what? That uh, to walk in a manner worthy of God. So today, in your faith, you must walk worthy of God. All right? Because once we are safe, we obey the gospel. We are not to drag our feet. But we are to go where God leads us. We are to do what the word of God tells us to do. Obey, ma. You know, some people, they want everything for God, but they don't want to obey God. So you cannot. It has to be done both ways. Huh? God wants to make you a victor in your faith, in your living. But you must also obey him. Okay? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever one sows, that will he also reap. What does it mean? It means you cannot try to play around with God. <laughs> In your faith in God, you cannot believe and then do opposite against his word. I mean, you can do that secretly, hidden, nobody knows. But remember the principle. What is the principle? Apa tanam, apa dapat. What you sow, you will reap. You sow anger, you will reap what whirlwind. What will whirlwind do? 
whirlwind will confuse everything in your life. Disruption. You know, like recently in America, the whirlwind, hurricane, ah, you see what happened? The streets are full of rubbish. The tree fallen. Everything's true all over. The house collapsed. So don't try to sow things that the word of God tells you not to be. Because you do that, you turn them, you're going to depart. So you need to sow what? Sow good thing. Because once you start sowing good thing in your family, in your life, to others, you will reap good things. Huh? You cannot sow revenge. You sow revenge, you're going to get suffering. Yeah? So don't sow hatred, you're going to be hated. So don't do that. Leave it to God. There are some things out of our control. We just pray and leave it to God. Don't try to do things your way. All right? This is so important. A lot of Christians, they try to sow bitterness, jealousy, envy, strife, all that. Friend, be careful. After what you sow, you are going to reap. So you don't want to sow things that later you regret and then you reap it. All right? So the Bible say, for the one who sow to his own flesh will from flesh reap corruption. See, corruption. That means it's going to be bad, not good things. Corrupted. Okay? You sow bad languages, you're going to get corruption. Bad things into your life. Uh, some of us as parents, you score who are children using all the bad languages. Never mind. It's going to come back to you. Don't worry. It's like you throw rubbish, the rubbish will come back to you. So don't do that, okay? And then the Bible say what? Uh, so to the Spirit, will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So how do you sow to the Spirit? Peace. Kindness, love, forgiveness, faith, joy. Huh? Things that are peaceable. Okay? So you must start sowing gentleness, kindness, compassion, empathy. Okay? Kind-hearted. So good thing. Fruit of the Spirit. And then the Bible says you are going to reward eternal life. Okay, so in verse 12 tells us uh, we are to be what followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. So you need patience. Don't always uh, hurry buddy. Okay, it will take a while. Uh, some of us, we are weary, not waiting on God. So we, we, we must continue to be patient in our faith in God. Don't give up. Uh, a good example, okay, is uh, Abraham. Now you remember I mentioned the children of Israel. They whined, they were murmuring, they were complaining as they go to the promised land. All along their, the way in their life, they complain to God. Okay? And the Bible has this to say. They all die in the wilderness. Huh? They die in the wilderness. They did not receive the promises of God entering into Canaan land. So we don't want to do that. huh? So, a good example, in verse 13 and 14, Hebrews chapter 6 says what? For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Verse 14 saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Okay? So when God called Abraham, that time his name was not Abraham, it's just Aram, Abram, Abram. 
ke Abraham. The Bible say in Genesis chapter 12 that Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when God called him to come out of Haran. Okay? And then God made this promise to Abraham uh, or Abraham. If he left his family, his country and follow God, God would make him a great nation. Okay? In Genesis chapter 12. So, Abraham, as both he and his wife Sarai were without children, and they are 75 years old, you know, past the childbearing age, so to say. But God promised him that if he followed God, he would not uh, be childless. But God will also make him a father of many nations. Huh? So, Abraham followed God and God's promises. Okay? But then, each year, no child. But God promised Abraham, 70, right up to 90 over, no, 20 over years, 25 years. No children. Huh? When God make a promise, the scriptures say in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. That means Jesus, huh, the son of man. That means Jesus say, Abraham lived to see my days. That means in Abraham time, Jesus was already there, so to say, because God is a spirit. Okay, the flesh has not born yet. The, the flesh was born in Bethlehem. But in the spirit, God was, you know, the one that uh, promised Abraham. And then the Bible say, uh, he, has he said and will not do it? Or has he spoken and he will not fulfill it? That means God is God. <laughs> so if God called you and I, <coughs> God is not a man. But Jesus is more than a man. So what Jesus has promised you, he will keep it. You see, when Jesus called me in 1976, he promised me. And I will tell you, I'm a living testimony. Today, looking back in 1976, 40 some years, everything that God called me, promised me, fulfilled. Fulfilled, my friend. I'm a living testimony. I will tell you that. That time I was only what? 20 years old. God called me to come back. Everything that I that time wanted, God fulfilled it today. Okay? So when God make a promise, He is all powerful. He is Jehovah. I am that I am. Okay? In Psalms 115, verse 3, say this, Our God is in the heaven. He does all that He pleases. So remember, you have a God who is in heaven today. His name is Jesus Christ. He will do what He pleases. Huh? That's the promise. Nothing is too hard for God. Jeremiah 32 tells us, Nothing is too hard for God. Remember that. Nothing. You need to just believe. So God knows the end from the beginning. When God promises something, there is nothing that can come up to make God change his mind. God cannot say, oh, like man, you know, oh, I think I, uh, this is not right. I don't like the fellow. I changed my mind. Ah, that can happen to human being. But as far as God is gone, no such thing. God will not say later, oh, I don't like you. Or later, you, you did not, you know, live up to my expectation. No, no, no. When God promised you, he will do it. Okay? So, God promised Abraham and Sarah a child, father of many nations. Did God fulfill it? Yes. 
But it was God's timing after 25 years. You know why after 25 years? Because the reality is Abraham wanted a son so bad that he wanted to worship his son as an idol. Ah, yeah. If God would have given Isaac to Abraham one year earlier, maybe 24 years, maybe 23 years, maybe 20 years, maybe 10 years, maybe 5 years, Abraham would have forgotten God and make Isaac his idol. Because God later tested Abraham. You know, after 25 years, give him a, 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 a child, a son, Isaac, and then Isaac grew to become a teenager, a young lad. And then God told Abraham, take your son, your only son, go and sacrifice him to me. Did Abraham do that? Yes. So what happened? Abraham did not worship Isaac as his idol. Because after 25 years at the age of 90 over, God gave Abraham a son. And Abraham willingly offered his son to God. Because Abraham believed if God can give him a son after 25 years at the age of 90 over, God can bring him back to life. So the problem is where? Not God. Abraham. Abraham's faith. You see, some of us, God cannot give you everything. Why? It's you that God is worried about. Your faith. A lot of people they receive too quick from God everything and then say bye-bye. I have one guy. He was from a slum area, very poor. No money. Every time pastor has to buy him food, enjoy Kentucky, do this, do that. Because give him money for petrol. But after he get from God what he wanted, after he start working and earning thousands of ringgit, and this is back in 1980, uh, thousands of ringgit, bye-bye God. He disappeared already. If God did not give him that, and after maybe uh, nine, two, year 2000, then only when he is like 60 years old, then God gave him some riches, he would have stayed in his faith in God. See, some people receive too fast. Say goodbye, God. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem there. Huh? So why did God want to give them earlier? There's a reason. Same thing with Abraham. Abraham did not receive the child. And eventually, Abraham, what? Father Abraham. All the nations of the world, those who have faith in God, Abraham, become the father of the faithful. So, we like Abraham, we are to wait on God, patient in our faith, no matter what happens. Don't serve God. Oh God, I want this. Oh God, do you want to give me that? I don't know. One time a doctor told me that. Yeah, he was faithful one year, second year, third year, bye-bye. And then he told me this. He's a doctor. He said, Pastor, I cannot serve God anymore. I said, why? Because I've been faithful. I give my tithe. I give my offering. I come to church. I take part in everything. But God never make me rich and bless me. So bye-bye. So he lose his faith in God. And he lose becoming a doctor. He ended up as what? A fortune teller. Ha! Huh. Can you imagine? His fate went to the extreme side. He became a fortune teller. From a doctor, you know. What happened? You ask pastor, I don't know. Because his faith, he must have patience. If he stay on today, he would have been a successful doctor. God would have blessed him because that was the testing. His faith, he was not patient. Psalms 27 verse 14 says this, Wait on God. 
be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. See, some of us, we have waited for many years. Some of us have waited for huh, 20, 30, I don't know. But the Bible says what? Wait on God. What God promised you? Eventually, He will bring it come to pass. Because God is not a man, God will not lie. So whatever you have in God, hold on. God promised you. So we all need to learn what? Wait on the Lord. You say, how long, Pastor? I don't know. <laughs> God knows. But you have to wait. Huh? Uh, Pastor waited. Many things I waited. Some, many years. Some very quick, few months. Okay? So what does it mean to wait on the Lord? It means uh, you must be diligent. Serving Him. Doing your best. Uh, it's like uh, you are called to be a waiter. You know, when you're called to be a waiter, you wait. That means the waiter is not to be a cook. Uh, the waiter is not to be the restaurant manager. But the waiter is to wait on the customer. The waiter is to make the customer happy. And when the customer is happy, the waiter will get what? Tips. Money la. So the waiter is to do what? Wait on the customer. But the waiter say, no, no, no. I'm the manager. Cannot. No, no, I'm the cook. Or, no, no, I'm the bartender. No, you are called to be the waiter. Wait on the Lord. Okay? So this is what you and I are supposed to do. God's promises, we are to wait. Okay? So, and then we also see uh, Abraham now shows a pattern of faith for every believer in Jesus Christ. Okay? Romans chapter 4, verse 18 says this. In hope, that is Abraham, believe against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he has been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. Not unbelief make him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the word it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone. But for ours also, it will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. So you see, not just to Abraham, but today to you and I, in our faith, not to lose hope, not to be weary. And we are living in very trying times. Yeah, very trying time. Huh? A lot of people, when the trying time comes, you know, when so close, they give up. It is sad. It's like you run in a race and you're coming to the finishing line and then you give up. So sad. Just a short more distance. We, need, we are nearing the finishing line and we need to finish it. So in our faith, let's have patience. Let's show diligence. Don't drag. Don't be slothful. Okay? So Abraham is a good example that we can be people in Hebrews chapter 11, say what? Heroes of faith. Okay? 
heroes of faith. So Jesus Christ is the sure hope of every believer. Because the Bible says, yes, now in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 says what? By two immutable things. That means two reasons, two strong reasons in which it was impossible for God to lie. We have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enter into that within the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us enter, even Jesus make an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That means here, uh, today, our hope, Jesus Christ is our high priest. Jesus will not lie to you. God will not lie to you. So, you need to set uh, your hope in running the race just like Jesus Christ, don't get tired. Don't be discouraged. So when you are tired and discouraged, what you need? You need a refreshment. You need a time of refreshment. A rest. To rejuvenate again your faith. That's why it is so important that the people of God we need to rest. In a race, you cannot keep running. You are so tired. So take a break. Take a, a, a rest. Okay? Renew your strength. Romans chapter 3, verse 22 says this. Uh, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He has passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness and at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So today, who is he just justify? It is God. And God wants you to be victorious in your faith. Don't be weary. All right? Have patience. Cling on to the promises of God. What God has started the promise in your life, let him finish it. All right? And today, Jesus wants us uh, to lay hold on the hope. All right? Cling to him. You know, a drowning man, okay? When he's drowning, they throw him a a lifesaver, you know, the, the stoop called lifesaver, he will cling on to it and he will not let go until he is pulled out of the water. Same thing in your faith, in my faith, Jesus is our lifesaver. We cling on to him and he will come and take us back with him. Amen. So this evening, again, Keeping your faith in God's faithfulness. Remember, we might fail in our faithfulness to God, but don't fail in your faith in God. Okay? Because God is faithful. You and I might be at times unfaithful, but we must never lose our faith in God.